Uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our first year head coach here at Tulane, Willie Fritz. Thank you, Curtis. Appreciate it. Hey, I, I, I really appreciate everybody coming out here uh, this afternoon. And uh, uh, we always appreciate all the exposure that you give Tulane University and our football program. I don't know if uh, Curtis introduced Katie or not. Katie Morris right here in front. And uh, she'll be working with the football program and helping us with a lot of video and graphics and interviewing the players. And she can also help you out if you're you're out and about or at practice and you don't see one of the uh, someone from the sports information department, she can help you as well. Obviously, go to them first. But if not, Katie's available to help you. Uh, very excited about my, my first season here at Tulane University. Uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit different. I'm learning on the fly. Uh, we, we are a little restricted with numbers. We've, uh, we're allowed to bring in 105 guys, and we actually brought in 91. And it, it's uh, somewhat difficult to, to bring in uh, walk-on players that I've, I've been able to do at a few other schools. Tulane's fairly expensive, I guess. And uh, so it's hard to get a, a whole lot of walk-ons to, to come here. But, uh, you know, the guys have, have been working extremely hard. I have been uh, really blessed with uh, how they've embraced myself as a head football coach, our staff. Uh, we do things differently, obviously. There's a lot of different ways to skin a cat, but uh, they've been very, very easy to work with and uh, uh, do everything that, that's required of them or ask of them from our coaching staff. Uh, I'll just kind of go through all three phases of the ball. Uh, we're still learning. We're, we just uh, completed practice number six, you know, about an hour and a half ago, and we'll have practice number seven tonight. This will be our first day of two-a-days, the NCAA changed the rules a few years ago where you have a five-day acclimatization period where you're only allowed to practice one time a day. Then you can practice two times, one time the following day, et cetera. And you're allowed to have 29 practice opportunities before your first ball game. So there's a formula that you use. We'll have a few days off here and there so the guys can, you know, get rejuvenated and get their legs back underneath them. Uh, we still got a battle for quarterback. I'm sure everybody's going to ask me, you know, who's the number one quarterback. If I knew, I'd tell you, but uh, that's still a work in progress. We've, we've got three guys that are really competing, and, and each day I see good things out of each and every one of them. Uh, for us, you've got to be able to throw the ball extremely well, and you've got to be able to run the ball extremely well. I tell those guys all the time, when they run the football, I, I want our, our fans and and the opponents to think that uh, Dontrell Hilliard or Sherman Beatty's running the football. Uh, when we throw it, obviously, we want them to be able to throw it like a Division I quarterback. So uh, all three of those guys, Glenn and, and Darius Bradwell and, and Jonathan Brantley, are, are competing on a daily basis. And, and hopefully here in the next uh, five to ten practices, we might be able to narrow that down to a couple guys that are working. Uh, if we go into week one and we're unsure, we'll play two guys. I've done that before. If one guy's clear cut, we'll play that one guy. Uh, I, I'm sure I'm going to know a lot more about our football team, you know, after two or three games than I do after 29 practices. So uh, there's no substitute for seeing what a guy can actually do in a, in a real ball game. Uh, I think running back is a strength of ours. We've got, I think, four excellent running backs. Uh, I mentioned Dontrell and and Sherman, uh, Lizetta Thompson is, is an excellent football player. I think he can help us in, in the kicking game as well. Josh Rounds has got a ton of experience here at, at Tulane. And those four guys, I, I think, are, are uh, definitely Division I running backs. And, and uh, that's good because we like to run the football as well. Uh, tight ends. Uh, we, we've got four guys that are going to play a bunch for us. Uh, Charles Jones, uh, uh, Kendall. Ardwan, those guys are, are, are looking uh, uh, fantastic. They, they're big targets. They, they can run good routes. They've got soft hands. Uh, and they also can really block extremely well. They can do all the blocks. They can line up as a tight end, they, uh, you know, attach to the tackle. They can, they can split out wide. They can get in the backfield. They, they can do a lot of different things. And uh, uh, Marshall Wadley and, and uh, Sergio Medina also have got some things that they can do that are unique in their skill set and will also help us in the kicking game. Uh, 
wide receivers. We, we, we added four wide receivers, four freshman wide receivers, and I think all four of them are in the mix right now. Uh, if we were to travel tomorrow, we'd bring nine receivers to the game. All of them, uh, I think, uh, have shown us that they can run good routes and have good hands. It's going to be interesting to see how well they block. We're going to start doing some more live uh, uh, tackling type situations. And, and right now, they're getting in position to block. But we're going to see if they can really finish those blocks, because that's an important part of our our uh, uh, offensive uh, football team is we, we've got to have guys that are complete football players. I tell those wideouts all the time, I I don't need half a football player, a guy that can just uh, be a good receiver. But when on the run game, you're really wasting a body out there. Offensive line, we've got four guys right now that, that really have, have shown us that they're uh, uh, you know starting type guys for us, John LeGlue and Todd Jaquette at the tackle positions, and then Chris Taylor, who, who really has, has got an opportunity, obviously, to be a four-year starter for us, and then uh, Junior Diaz at the center position. So we've got four or five guys competing for that fifth offensive line position. Uh, defensively, uh, you know, we have uh, feel like, you know, uh, we've got some incredible depth at our defensive line position. Led by Tanzel Smart. Tanzel's one of the, the hardest working guys that I've ever coached. And, uh, you know, he's uh, great attention to detail. First team all conference guy last season. And uh, we think he's going to have a phenomenal senior year. Uh, we've got Sean Wilson up front, Eldrick Washington, uh, John Washington. I know I'm going to leave some guys out, but we've got some big guys, big bodies that can stay at the point of attack, defensive end wise. I think we've got good speed and explosiveness at the end position. Darren Williams, uh, Quentin Carroll, uh, Ade Aruna, uh, just to name a few guys that I think are, are going to be prime time guys for us playing the defensive end position. Linebacker wise, we, we've got about eight guys that are competing right now. Uh, you know, led by Nico Marley. Nico is a first team all conference player for us. He's in a little different scheme right now with what we're running, but we're expecting a lot of explosive plays out of him and Eric Thomas, Eric Bowie, Rajon uh, Marbley, they've all played a lot of football for us. And, and then talking about uh, the back end, the secondary, I feel like we got really good depth at the corner position. A couple guys are, are banged up right now, Perry Nickerson and Donnie Lewis, but they played a lot of football here at Tulane. And then the safety position, we've got some pretty big guys at safety and a lot of experience coming back at those positions as well, led by Jerry Franklin. Uh, kicking game, I've had a lot of questions about special teams since I got here at Tulane. Uh, we, we've got, a, I think, an excellent snapper. Uh, uh, Garen uh, Etherly uh, from San Antonio, true freshman. He's looked very impressive in camp and he'll be our starting snapper. Uh, punting wise, uh, we've got some competition going on. Zach Block has kind of separated himself a little bit, but we're going to com have competition at that position all the way throughout uh, the rest of preseason camp. Uh, field goal kicker, uh, we've got a lot of great competition with that. We've got three or four guys on a daily basis that kind of shift who's the number one guy, who's the number two guy, etc. So we'll continue with. Uh, competition there and the kickoff guy right now Zach looks to be a little bit ahead of the other guys but we'll still be competing on that all the way up until September 1st when we kick off against Wake Forest so that's just a little preview of us offensively defensively and also in the kicking game and I'd be uh, uh, pleased to open it up for any questions that anybody might have yes Ed Yeah, we're, we're going to – I've had that question a couple times. I know that there's been a lot of problems uh, in the special teams. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm directly involved in the special teams. We're going to play our best players. And uh, I tell them all the time, dependable players who can run and hit. 
And it was, uh, you know, in my opinion, you know, you, you got to do a great job, obviously, of sna snapping and catching and punting and kicking and holding and all those kind of things. But we got to get better in our coverage units. We got to get, get better, better with our return game, with our pressure and kicks. Uh, we're, we're really paying special attention to that. Uh, here in the next week, we're going to do a lot of good on good work. And uh, if you've ever watched a scrimmage, we will have when the officials are here. It's not just going to be working offense and defense. We're going to be working on, you know, punt versus punt block teams, uh, kickoffers, kickoff return teams, extra point field goal versus extra point field goal block. Uh, so we teach technique and fundamentals in those areas, just like you do offensively and defensively. It's, uh, you know, it's a winning edge for your football team if you're great in the kicking game. We're going to have a bunch of them. I've told the starters that if I don't, I don't, I'm not playing you on there, that's not a compliment. That means I just don't think you're good enough to play in the kicking game. You know, so we're, we're going to play the, the best guys out there, regardless of whether they're a starter or they're a backup. You know, and, and uh, you know, sometimes you got to do a good job of seeing a, a guy in a position that uh, maybe uh, he's playing every single snap on defense or offense, and maybe he's only involved in a couple phases of the kicking game. but. You know, you can get exposed in that area faster than you can get exposed offensively and defensively because the ball is traveling, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70 yards down the football field with a punt or a kick. So you need dependable guys who are, who are great athletes. And uh, uh, the kids have, have bought in. They've been fantastic to work with. We have very specific meetings when we get in there, and, and uh, they're, they're, they're learning how we do things, you know, and, and – uh, uh, every time you come in, you, you do things differently than the last staff. You know, it's just the way of the world. And uh, we're, we're certainly wanting to, uh, uh, you know, show our guys how important it is. And you can't just talk about it. you got to work at it. Yes, sir. I've been yelling a lot of encouragement to these guys. So, uh, really, I'm sounding pretty good right now. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I want us to have very high expectations, and I've told our guys from the day one that our our goal is to, is to to, to play in a bowl game and win a bowl game. You know, and I think that's an attainable goal. Uh, I don't get into all the preseason stuff. You know, it really. Someone told me the other day we were picked 122nd my first year at Georgia Southern out of the 128 Division One schools. I think that's what we're picked this year. You know, uh, so we had a pretty good year, undefeated conference champs. So uh, I, I'm, I'm really not concerned with that. I, I'm just really, I guess I'm, I may be simple-minded. I can focus on the task at hand every single day. And we're just trying to get a little bit better every single day. And, uh, you know, I think the, the, the young men have bought into it. And, and uh, you know, that, that's just what we're trying to do is we want to win every game. You know, that's. Why we go out there and play? It's not, you know, hey, let's. I think we got a chance in these four or five, and these are going to be tough. I, I see coaches. I, if a coach talks about that on my staff, I'm going to get after his butt. They, they don't do it on my staff. I hear guys say, hey, we got a chance in these. And, you know, she, we, we want to win every every game we play. That's that's how we're competing and practicing on a daily basis. Yeah, you know, I didn't kick off anybody. They they kick themselves off when they leave our program. You know, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, we're uh, we want our guys to be true student athletes, and and uh, you know, the majority of our guys are are fantastic. They do a superb job as a student. They do a superb job as a as a student and as an athlete, and they do a great job as, as a citizen. And uh, you know, sometimes. Uh, 
when I got here, I, you know, there was some guys that maybe could have played and, and didn't want to continue playing. Uh, you know, I wasn't going to beg anybody to come out here and play. You got to, you got to have great love for your university and great love for the sport of football to get out here and, and put the, the equipment on. And it, it's, it's kind of hot here, I've noticed. You know, so, you know, you better really have great passion to play for Tulane and, 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 and play with, you know, your, for uh, this football program and, and in order to be successful. That's, that's what I'm looking for. I don't, I don't worry about guys that we don't have. I don't, I'm not hardly, I rarely even talk to our guys about it. Yes. Pardon? Oh, you know, I, I, you get in the name of one or two guys off and, and you, you, you miss one or two. But, uh, you know, some of the freshmen that, uh, you know, probably the receiving core has impressed me because uh, we were just limited in numbers. You know, if you came and watched us in the spring, it was hard for us to really go through the type of tempo of practice I wanted to go to because we just didn't have very many guys. And, and so... Uh, you know, we've got four young guys that have come in, uh, DJ Owens and Jacob Robertson and Darnell Mooney, and I'm missing one here. Who am I missing, guys? Chris Johnson. You know, so, you know, we got these four guys that have uh, uh, come in, and they're, they're athletic, and, you know, I'm j I've just been impressed. We've hit on some guys for coming in late recruiting. You know, we, 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 we did a nice job. I, the coaches did a very good job. The, Players did a good job, and when they hosted them, and uh, so uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess I would mention the uh, receiving core just because there's four of them, and it's, it's given us depth. Yes, sir. Well, it was a surprise on their part too. You know, you know, ever uh, you got to be a little generic in your first week game plan until you get some tape on some people and you, you kind of work your game plan based on what you feel like they're going to do. But everybody's going to have new wrinkles that they learned in the spring and the summer. Us, Wake Forest, etc. Uh, we would like to be the same Houston model. That I think my last season at Sam, we had 34 touchdown passes. You know, and, and uh, I came over to Georgia Southern. The skill set of the quarterbacks there was their strength was not throwing the ball. Now, those guys could run it. There was no doubt about that. So we played to their strengths, and that's what we did with our football team. So uh, we, we would like to, to be a team that, that can be 50-50. I've been impressed. We've done a great job of, of completing the deep ball in all uh, parts of the field, outside, over the middle of the field. Uh, it's been good. I mean, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that all three of our quarterbacks can throw the football. I want one of them to step up and be a great runner as well. You know, the run game opens up the pass game. The pass game opens up the run game. When you just do one or the other, you got to be really good in that area to be effective. Yes. Navy did. You know, our offensive uh, philosophy and structure is, is a lot different than Navy's. They're what I like to call an under center triple option team, uh, and they're mostly all the time option. Uh, we will run option anywhere from 10 to 25 times a game, but a lot of it is window dressing, and we're running inside zone, power, counter, all right, and uh, different types of option plays along with the I think it's a sophisticated drop back passing game. So it's, it's quite a bit different. Uh, the reason I like what we do is it, it helps our defense out. They're able to prepare for all those different spread formations because we run those spread formations and they're able to see the, the pass concepts from good players instead of a scout team each week. They see it from us on a daily basis. Uh, so we're, we're quite a bit different than Navy, but. You know, Navy's had a tremendous amount of success because they believe in what they're doing. And uh, you got to do a great job of preparing for them most of the time in three days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then sit back and relax a little bit on Friday and have it be more mental and 
get healed up and then play them on Saturday. So that's uh, you know that's the tough the thing that's tough with any off good offense is you have limited time to prepare for them. Theirs is just so unique. There's not carryover from week to week. Well, you know, that's always important. You'd love to get off to a great start. You know, these guys have, uh, have paid the price, and, you know, we still got 23 more practices before that first ball game to, 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 to completely pay the price. But, you know, I, I just I, – my hat's off to how hard they've been working. I'd love for, for them to see success. But uh, you, you just got to keep plugging away. You know, I've, I've just been doing this for a long time and, and been doing it for a long time as a head football coach. and. Those coaches and those teams and players and managers and trainers that are up here one day and down here the next day, you know, that's what, that's why they call them upsets, you know, because they, they're not able to bring it every single week with their preparation. And that's something that we'll do. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, after we get done winning a game or if the, the other deal happens, you're not going to see any difference out of me on Monday. You know, we're, we're, we're on to the next deal. You know, and, and you got to do that in the season. You know, and, and as coaches, as players, we work 365 days a year, you know, for 12 opportunities. I think you got to get up for every single one of them. And you can't let one game, you know, hurt you the next week. You know, and sometimes, guys, sometimes that happens with a win. You know, you, you, you recognize some problems that are, that are really going on with your football team after a win, and you don't get them corrected because everybody's feeling good about things. So that's part of my job as a coach. So, yeah, we'd love to get off to a great start, Ed, but, you know, that's, that's you know, our, our plan is to win our first ball game and get off to a good start. Yeah, you got to adapt and improvise. You got to change. You know, sometimes we have to change practice based on the weather. You got to do the same thing with your offense. If, if there's some, uh, you know, we're always uh, evaluating ourselves. And we're seeing what's good and what isn't good, and why isn't it good, or why is it good? Uh, you got to start understanding your matchups when you play certain teams. You know, some weeks this personnel grouping might be better than this personnel grouping. Uh, you start getting guys that are showing they can do things with the ball. You better get them the ball. You know, that's called coaching. There, you know, you got to put your guys in the right positions to be successful. You know, so yeah, we'll we'll change throughout the course of the season based on our success or lack of success. Yeah, I'm feeling good about it every day. We've, I, I've got a great offensive line coach. He is, he's outstanding. I probably shouldn't say this in front of cameras. Everybody will start looking at him. But he's a great offensive line coach. And, uh, you know, we've got good size there. We really do. We got big guys on the offensive line. Uh, shoot, I think Junior Diaz is the uh, smallest guy of the group, and he's he's 300 pounds. You know, so we got big guys, and uh, you know they're they're uh, extremely hard workers, and, and you know we just we need to get about three more. Right now, we feel really confident with about four of those guys that they can play winning Division One football. We need a, we need about three guys you know, to step up and be able to play at that level as well. Thank you. Appreciate it.